In 2022, the world of guitar pedals has been a bit divided, in my opinion. Not in that people are fighting or they're angry at each other, but more the products that are being made. If you see, on one hand, you have the crazy mad scientists over at like Chase Bliss, Hologram Electronics, that sort of thing, Maris, who are making these crazy DSP-powered, futuristic, bleep-bloop type machines. On the other hand, you have people, I guess, kind of like companies like the up-and-coming Isle of Tone, who are doing vintage recreations of old school pedals and just focusing on what old school stuff did and bringing it to the future either um either in a really like accurate way accurate to the past or in a more modern way but you'd be hard pressed to find companies that would be in the middle of that equation people who are doing new and interesting stuff but also not crazy wild stuff and kind of you could say, almost unusable type stuff. But there are one company, there's a couple, but the company that I think embodies that perfectly that we're going to look at today is Electronic Audio Experiment. Formed in 2015 by guitarist, founder and, and electrical engineer John Snyder, uh, Electronic Audio Experiments has been kind of working against the grain, coming up with primarily guitar and bass pedal stomp boxes, but pedals that I, uh, aren't just a clone or a variation on something that already exists, coming up with something new and, dare I say it, original in the world of guitar pedals. Now, we're going to take a look at four of their pedals that I currently own. They have uh, um, maybe seven or eight on the lineup at the moment, but we're going to look at the four I have, and they are all pedals that I really like and really enjoy. So first, let's start with the Longsword. Um, I think this may have been one of the first or even one of their earlier designs. Um, I can't, I'm not quite sure which one was their first, but it's the first one we're going to look at. Uh, and this is just a good old... Dusty. Good old fashioned distortion uh, with some cool kind of tricks. So it's a distortion at its heart, but it's a very kind of unique sounding distortion in that you have a lot of control over the sound. Uh, it's a good kind of almost Swiss Army knife distortion type sound. So you have your main circuit, which you engage with this foot switch, uh, which has a drive, obviously, volume, obviously. Then you have bass, uh, was it low, middle, and high. But it's not. Uh, it's not your traditional kind of stylings, it's a bit different. The low and the high work like a James Backsandle James Backsandle tone stack. So they are cut and boost. So if you turn them down, you're cutting low or high. If you turn them up, you're boosting low or high. And then the mid control is a similar thing. It controls the cut or boost of the mid control of the mid frequency. Uh, then in here you have oops, in here with this switch you have a mid switch. Uh, a mid shift, sorry, which shifts the kind of the EQ of the middle of the mid frequencies, and then you have uh, diode clippings, where you can get you've got three different switches, and three different sounds. Uh, I set up a pretty kind of thick, chunky sound, which reminded me of like uh, Queens of the Stone Age. So I played my best Queens of the Stone Age ripoff rift, rift, riff, riff on the long sword. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, an interesting one, the Halberd. You know, first we had the long sword, big long stabbing thing. Now we have the Halberd, another big long stabbing thing. Um, and this is a distortion-y, overdrive, fuzzy kind of sound. This is a really unique pedal. While the long sword was 
not necessarily taking direct inspiration from anything, from anything, it gives you lots of control. This is definitely something unique, a, a, a circuit that I really enjoy because it has a lot of focus on kind of high, mid, transient kind of sounds. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain it, you'll hear how it sounds, but it's a real clang machine. And the clang term is like this kind of very metallic uh, kind of guitar tone, think Steve Albini from uh, Big Black and Shellac, that sort of thing. So you don't have any kind of real <laughs> normal controls apart from a tone, which is just a pretty standard tone control. You have post and pre. So pre you can kind of think of as a gain knob and post you can kind of think of as a volume knob. Um, and then you also have the depth, which is kind of like an additional gain control, but for the low frequencies only. It helps you really add the depth, obviously, back into the guitar sound, and that's why I really like it. I like it for that kind of, you can still get a really kind of high, chimey guitar sound, but then you can add some low frequencies back into this. Other than that, we have the, uh, the toggle switch in the middle, now, the, this used to be a bigger version of the Halberd, this is the version 2, so the middle switch is just like the original one. Up is the kind of the clang, the really bright setting, and down is a much darker setting. Uh, for my playing clip, I had it on the up, playing the Jazz Master, um, and I just played some clangy shit, so let's see how the Halberd goes. So next up we have um, we have my first audio uh, electronic audio experiments. Can't try saying that three times. My first pedal from electronic audio experiments, the Model Fet. Now while I love the fact that they that John and the team over at EAE make lots of really unique and individualistic sounding overdrives, one other thing I really like they do is they take older circuits and bring them into the modern era. And I'm talking about older, unique circuits. They don't just do, here's our blues breaker, here's our Marshall in a box. They've actually gone and taken old kind of stuff that's more popular in the underground subgenres, maybe, and bring it into the modern world. And that's what they've done with this. The Model FET, if you couldn't already guess from the little thingos there, is a Sun Model T in pedal form. Um, and this is just a really, it's actually a bit rusty used to live near the beach. Um, this is just a really great overdrive that I would recommend you use at the end of your signal chain, either at the end of the drives or at the end of your entire pedal board, because it's really good at just being kind of an always on thing, adding something back to your guitar tone, especially if you don't want, you know, if you want something that's a bit more kind of a bit grittier, but still with lots of high end, you know. Obviously, the mo Model Ts are really popular in Stoner and Doom, thanks to the band Sun. Um, but, as in Sun Model T, Sun the band, you know what I'm saying. Um, but I think this pedal and Sun Model Ts can be used in so many different situations. You know, if you keep the, keep the gain low, especially on the normal, maybe bump the bright up a bit, it can be really good for kind of like alternative rock, shoegaze, indie type stuff, and I've used it in that situation before, and it can also be good in kind of 
heavier, obviously it's good in heavier stone situations as well when you crank the gain up. Um, but I think it really shines in lower gain settings as well. Now that being said, I'm going to play it high gain because we're here to show the pedal off. But this thing takes pedals really well, stacks really well. Um, you're probably better off using it directly into like an effects loop or something. But I just use it into the front of my amp and it works fine as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bust out the Les Paul, play a couple of stoner-esque riffs. But if you ever get the chance to look at this, go look at Mark Johnson's Johnston Johnson's demo on YouTube. He really explores how this can be used in lots of different Finally, we get up to the last electronic audio experiment pedal that I own, and that is the Limelight. Now, this also happens to be my favorite of the bunch. This is, I would consider to be my main overdrive sound that I use in my band, Wetlands. Um, it's not too many songs where I won't either use the drive or the boost. This is just probably one of the best overdrive pedals I've ever played. Now, this was uh, developed um, with the boys from Touche Amore, the guitarists, Clayton something, and I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, love Touche Amore, though. Didn't only found out about them because of this pedal, but I've, I've become quite a big fan since I've heard of them. And I use a very similar rig to them, so I use a Fender guitar into a Fender amp. And so I thought this would be a great chat for me because I, I use that setup in a band that plays kind of, not necessarily post-hardcore, but in that same kind of vein. And He's just he's it's he's done something special with this circuit and just made something that is perfect for what I need and is perfect for my sound and my tone and my setup. So you've got an independent boost up the front here, which can be used independently, unlike the the long sword. Uh, then you've got gain, tone, volume, all pretty standard. There's your main circuit and the focus switch. This. Sounds to me, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it sounds to me like it's just more of a kind of high, like it varies the, the mids and the highs a bit. So some settings are really dark, some are really bright. Um, but pretty much my main sound in, the, in my band Wetlands has been this pedal uh, running pretty hot into the 1981 Inventions DRV running really low gain. And that's pretty much been my main sound. I have the, the the DRV on for like my low, cleaner stuff, giving a bit of gain and sparkle. And then I just slam it with this. And that's it, using either a Jazzmaster or a Strat. And it's perfect. It works perfect. It's probably my favorite overdrive pedal I own, just about. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't really give any more praise than that. So let's hear how it sounds. <laughs>
So that's the end of my video. Those are all the EAE pedals I own. Uh, a couple more exist. The Dude Incredible, which is like a Steve Albini harmonic percolator thing going on, which looks very cool. Um, the Dagger, which uh, I don't have a super big desire to get because I think it's just a simplified version of the Longsword. I could be wrong on that. Um, and the Boost he did with Obscura Guitars, the OXEAE Boost. Um, I would like to get the boost, but you know, time and money, money ain't time, time ain't money, that sort of thing. I ain't got the cash for it, but maybe one day. But that's pretty much it, you know, I just wanted to talk about them. I think they're a, uh, a shining light in the world of copycat guitar makers where everyone's making copies of the same thing, clones of the same thing. Um, and I think these guys are actually doing it right. They're making unique circuits unique sounds, cool graphics, they've got great looking pedals, great name pedals, great sounding pedals and they're not direct clones. I mean the, the limelight is kind of like based off a of blues breaker but it's not even a blues breaker anymore. Like it's so different. I, I've played a blues breaker and a king of tone and that sound better than all of them if I'm being completely honest. Better than a king of tone for sure. For my needs anyway. But I think that's what's so great about them and, and you know there's, there's almost a scientific level of of um, engineering that goes into these pedals, or probably is a scientific level of engineering that goes into these pedals, because I believe John has got like a PhD in some crazy electrical engineering shit going on. Like, it's mental stuff. So, if you haven't checked them out and you don't own any of their pedals, I highly recommend you to get some of each. They're definitely... Them and Earthquaker, I think, are up there as my two favourite pedal brands of all time, at least of the newer guard. People have come out in the last kind of year, 10, 20 years. I definitely think those two are up there for me. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Go check out Electronic Audio Experiments. Go check out any of my other videos if you want to see them. Um, like and subscribe. All that funny business. Click the bell. I don't even know if I have the bell on. Um, Anyway, do whatever you want, I don't care. I'll see you next time.